I don't think he's joined yet. So, and we can um, we can share the um, the feedback from that in a minute. Oh, here they are, great. Okay, well, I think those comments are a great way to start, um, and just. On that note, I'm going to introduce you now to Mamadou Salah, who is going to host the session today, and we're delighted to have him. And Mamadou is going to introduce the panel as well. So over to you, Mamadou. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Sally. Good afternoon, people. Uh, wherever you're joining us, we would like to welcome you to this conversation. Um, and we really hope that over the next hour and a half, we would have some really critical, possibly uncomfortable, but hopefully good conversations. So um, it's going to be open for everybody. And I know that we, we tend to focus today on, um, on, on imaging, images, uh, narratives um, that inform our understanding and, like they say, our imagination and, and optim uh, ultimately build our construction of social reality. And our construction of social reality, it, it becomes the way in which we understand the world and how we interact with the world. So where are these images telling, uh, coming from? Um, how do they influence our understanding? How do we, how do they uh, uh, also in, in influence our actions? So that's the kind of conversation we hope that uh, we'll be having. Um, I'm very grateful to uh, NYCI for putting this event together and for all the beautiful people, especially Sally, who made it happen. So in the panel today, I, I have, we have Kevin, um, who is um, a global youth work practitioner and works in Europe and, and does a lot of work in Africa as well. So Kevin, welcome. And uh, why is Kevin? Can you just give us a wave and put your camera on for a minute if you are there? Hello. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and we also have got Christina. Uh, Christina is a global youth work um, uh, creative uh, practitioner and researcher. Um, and also we are honored to have Christina here. Christina, give us a wave, please. Hi everyone, delighted to be here and to see everyone. Thank you, Christina. Um, we also have Ronan and Ronan is a PR and comms manager with DOHAS and they established the code of conduct on messages and images. Uh, they have recently revised this. So it will be absolutely brilliant. So I think the beauty about this, um, uh, this forum is that we have got the young people who've chosen their images with their youth workers, and they're going to tell us about their perspective and their construction of social reality. And then we will have the more formal groups and the organizations represented by Ronan in this case, who will also share what they think about it. So I, I think it's going to be a very good thing and a very good dialogue. I understand, Sally, that Nadia is not around. Sorry. You're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Nadia couldn't be here today, uh, Mamadou, but I think we have enough anyway, so we, it should be a rich discussion. Yeah, yeah, and 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 and, and I think uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, wonderful people at the moment. We've got 32 people on the call, so we will just kind of like, and I think it's not only about the input that comes from uh, the panelists, but also that there is also a very, very interesting conversation that comes from the audience as well. So maybe, maybe I should kick it off. I mean, in terms of the uh the mentee i mean can we go back to the mentee please just to pick up a few points or is it gone leo no leo can get that and actually um mamadou as we share that i see danny nervous who's the photographer is actually coming into the space so we can okay. maybe join with him later okay oh. uh <laughs> 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 we're having some technical challenges this morning or this evening this afternoon okay, okay. danny danny welcome yeah. Danny, welcome, welcome. Um, and, and you can see, you know, in terms of your own words in here, in terms of the image, um, you know, what siblings, you know, who, you know, family, that's one, that, that, that it's one likely to be used by 
true care or concern which comes across as white savior sometimes that child looks like he has responsible for siblings to get in his poverty poverty lack of justice sadness color diversity poverty surprise invasion so so you could see the images that are already being generated and i guess in a bit we could open up this conversation to, to take it further um but i would like now just to ask um to start with um um we will come back to this Leo. thank you very much but to start with i want to start by asking the panelists and i'm going to ask them in turn um you know what is your um, what is your name role and why do photos matter and how do they influence our work so if you can take two minutes as resp uh, uh, to respond to that as panelists so kevin if i start with you and just not to confuse you the question is what is your name i know it's kevin role and why do photos matter and how do they influence our work so you got two minutes response please hello <clears throat> my name is kelvin kelvin Agpalu. Um, I'm a global youth worker. Um, I'm also a creative director for um, the organization called Eurobot International Youth Work and Collaboration Limited. Um, in my role um, as, a, um, as a youth worker, um, I am mo mostly focused now on the global south and how our, the global north um, depicts the global south, the kind of images that is coming from, from there. And for me, images really, um, image tells a huge story. Um, I'm also a, a, a spoken word artist, and, and I tell most of my, 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 most of my work is done through storytelling. And image plays a big role in, in how human beings, we visualize or we imagine things, or we tell certain things. So for example, the image that for me is being portrayed in, 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 in the global South um, by, the, by the global North is something that affect me in a way because I, I am originally from Ghana, born in Ghana. And um, some of the images that normally you see in the North is something that it really, it could bring you down seeing that the story is completely different. Um, and that is why for me, it was, it's really important that um, um, I represent and not just me, not just represent, but I also try and get the, the voices of the people from the global South also into, into a spaces where their voices are also being heard because, again, the topic is about them. The images are coming from, from their side. So why, why is it that we are not also part into the discussion and really tell the true story that behind a specific image? And, um, and basically, this is um, one of the reasons why, for me, um, um, it, when it comes to imagery, it means a lot to me because it has, it's not just an image to me. It's an image that really talks about my culture. It talks about my heritage. It talks about my people. It talks about my continent. And that is the reason why for me, um, it means a lot in my work. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, uh, those are some powerful words. And I see that it's coming um, from your heart, from deep within your soul as well. Um, I guess that um, imaging is important, but I mean, I, I have to control myself from saying anything. I have to let the panelists answer the question because I'm just wanting to jump in and share. So Christina, could you respond to the same question, please? Um, hi, everybody. My name is Christina Yanku and I'm a global youth worker, consultant and creative practitioner. I'm working on a freelance basis, collaborating with different organizations. Uh, today, I'm joining you with the uh, head of Global Youth Worker representing our youth project that is situated in east uh, of Galway. I'm working there alongside with my fellow youth worker, Natasha Muldoon, who I think is uh, in, in this Zoom call as well. She's the soul and the driver of a Global Youth Worker Project at Family Resource Center. And in short, to respond uh, on the question, I think uh, they are part of the... Um, looking at images and, and uh, at their importance, uh, it's it's part of the the bigger question on that we ask uh, in our global youth work approach. The one referring on how do we came to believe what we believe, and I think this question, this big question, is guiding us in our youth spaces to to have conversations, discussions on unpacking what informs our thinking and attitudes, and examining imagery, it's one slice, one dimension of this uh, larger conversation. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christina. Thank you for sharing those thoughts. Um, Ronan, do you want to come in and share your thoughts as well? Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, so, um, my name is Ronan Doyle. Uh, I'm the head of communications and public engagement with DOCUS. And just for any of you who don't know, so DOCUS is a membership organization. We represent Irish um, humanitarian and development organizations. So we have 58 members. Uh, so some of them you will know that they've already been mentioned. Trocra, Concern would be our, some of our big ones, Goal. Uh, so we, we represent those type of organizations all the way down to very, very small uh, NGOs who operate maybe in one area in, uh, around, around the globe. So we have a very varied membership. The one thing they have in common is the work of international development and humanitarian uh, assistance. And for, for our part, in, if we talk about images, so just to go back to the very general thing, obviously we all know the old adage, uh, you know, an image paints a thousand words. That it, it, is, it is so true. Uh, images are the most, some of the most powerful things we as society create. Uh, going all the way back to the cavemen, they've always been the lasting representation of something. So they, they tell so much of our of, of of what we are, who we are. But what we also know is that photography images are they are subjective. They're not just ca capturing an objective moment in time. Something can change them, change them in the way that the angle of the of the lens, where it's focused, uh, wh where it's not focused, whether it's looking up or down, if it's a person. So there's so many different things that we must take into account when we're taking, you know, as, as the, 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 the taker of images and as us as the viewers of images, uh, how we decode them. So that's something that the work that we're really focusing on a lot now, because obviously we're trying to move away from the old, we've again mentioned already, the white saviorism approach. We're trying to move development uh, uh, work into a more, that partnership locally led, um, uh, you know, authentic representation, bearing witness where necessary, but uh, but but trying to always give uh, give capital and give uh, responsibility back uh, to the to the people who deserve it. So I'll talk a little bit more later about the actual code and where we're at with that. But just for now, that's kind of an uh, an overview and an answer, hopefully, to the question on 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 imagery and photographs. Thank you very much, Ronan. I think we, we have all, all had the three panelists who you know, shared their thought. But for me, um, I mean, and I'm going to exercise the chair's prerogative here to say a few things. Uh, but for me, it is really important uh, to think about, you know, who owns those images, how those images are generated, and for what purpose the images serve. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism of development organizations, um, and they've been accused of imaging pornography where they, they look at the most depressing pictures that would actually make you pull your purse strings to donate. Um, and, and, and then in, in doing that, uh, they'll be able to generate the money to fund their campaign and fund their work. But it also, as a side effect, uh, paints the South in a very, very horrible picture, as helpless, as powerless, as incapable of doing anything that can be a dependence in uh, narrative, but also, then when you go to the South, any of the countries in the South, you see people happy, you see people laugh, you see you know, development, and you probably would be shocked because you never imagined that it would be like that. Um, I've worked with a lot of students, and by the time um, you know, they actually get to, get, to, uh, get to some of these countries, they'll be shocked. I remember I used to take a number of students to, to the Gambia, and, and one of the students was saying, oh, we'll be we sleeping in houses or we'll sleep in the trees. And I just said, okay, we'll definitely sleep with the trees and we'll give you a blanket to actually tie yourself around a tree. <laughs> she, and you know, me being cheeky, she thought I was serious. She said, no, silly, I'm not serious. Of course, you don't sleep on a tree. But I'm just thinking how, how those, um, how those uh, images and how those realities are constructed through interaction. Um, and they can be quite, um, quite, um, quite serious. But I'm sure Sally would want me to also talk about the very terminology of the global South. Because before the global south, we were talking a lot about developing countries, you know. So that means there are countries that are developed, and there are countries that are not developed, or they're developing. But also that narrative uh, points the fact about it asks the question about what does development mean? Is development understood from Western, um, Northern, Eurocentric constructions of meaning, or are those uh, kind of like constructed from the Southern? kind of like perspective. Um, if you're talking about um, 
uh, the work of Amata Sen and Nussbaum, they talk about um, uh, capabilities. And, and Nussbaum says that there are about 10 capabilities about life and you know health and all the kind of stuff. And then Sen talks about the fact that you cannot, you cannot name those uh, capabilities because they mean different things to different people in different contexts and that these need to be negotiated with the people so what is it that we, we want to we want to achieve i mean is it about human rights the right to life is it about to be able to engage in the pursuit of happiness and and does that mean what development is or happiness or developing you know do you, if you live in a heart where you're, you're living in 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 in, uh, in sync with the art and mother art and living in hot houses and being sustainable and you're not living in skyscrapers does it mean that you are not developed but these are all conversations about meaning and how all of those things kind of like are generated are constructed are consumed so i don't know whether i should just take one or two questions and then we move on to the next step is there is there anybody with a burning question or contribution for under a minute who wants to come in you can just put your hand up, please, so that I can see you. Okay. It's going once, twice, gone. So okay. Ado, Ado is there, um, pro, um, Mamadi, Ado is there with his hand up. Okay, okay, sorry, I didn't see that. No. Ado, <laughs> so my hand is really small, so I couldn't see it. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, yeah, to be honest, um, we, we hold a year down in Cork. We have about three youth club, and we've been working close to with almost ninety six young people. Like they are all divided, um, mainly of those of migrant origin and those of your opportunities. Um, particularly, I think as eighty percent of our African origin and some of Pakistan, Indonesia, and, uh, Costa Rica, and El Salvador. Those images, what we've noticed. Um, it does break young people in the way, I'm just relating what they said. Um, it break them significantly yeah, because uh, let's say if we are talking about social inclusion, everyone is equal. And then in many schools, in many schools, they will have um, the call of child. They need to have donation. Automatically, um, you can see a school, let's say, especially young people that live in or study in rural school, they can be a school where the person is the only colored person. And just coming to their school, you have the picture of, sometimes you see some friends who say, ah, oh, that one look like you. That really does break them, reduce their self-esteem. Um, they feel really bad. And the, the funny thing is they do not know how to uh, communicate that feeling to, Another person. So what we notice usually it happen, they become withdrawn, depressed, or they they begin to dress really cool, not to associate themselves of the south hemisphere. Uh, they prefer to look like um, what you call it, American. And when we talk about American, what we have is the hip hop artists. They do not it is debatable, but they do not really represent something good or uh, morality and this is really to show that those images really do affect a lot of young people who become like bats they are neither a bird or an animal i uh, i think that's just something that um mm -hmm. that i wanted to bring up the now as a youth worker those images do also affect me. I want just want to tell you a story, a quick story. There, it was about uh, back in 2019. There was a program in Italy where we were talking about inclusion, European inclusion 2020. We went. Uh, it was in the migration 2020. I'm I can't that is a I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'll finish in ten seconds. Okay, and, good. And we went there. We were learning about um, migration and all that, and there were some images that mm -hmm. really did break me as a person. Thank you very much. I'm no, sorry no. for taking too much. No, 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 no. My colleague also want to say something, sorry. No, no, that's fine. Please go for it. Thank you, Ado. Thank you so much for the contribution. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Inu Sanger, working here at Love and Care for People as well. Just to, you know, add to um, what um, Ado already said, and probably some of the speakers have already highlighted, I want to bring it to a different angle. 
And um, there is a program we have here uh, at Love and Care for People where we, you know, we go to um, primary and secondary schools. We call it um, Hear Voices, you know, and, and we talk about the different cultural, um, different cultures in Ireland. Honestly, when we talk about Africa, they represent like the first reaction is poverty, um, very dirty environmental chaos and it is it is very very interesting to see that even children as young as seven have this ideology that africa as a continent as a like they don't know africa a lot don't know africa is a continent for many africa is a country but africa as a whole is poor that is very demeaning it, you know, it, it does really, really break a child. And there is an activity here we have at the, uh, here in the youth club. We um, probably is something that we can share where we did um, an in-house study about the effects of these images on young people. You would shed tears if you see the responses from these young people. And truth be told, their voices should really be heard. It's called Hear Our Voices, and it is very, very shocking. It is very, very shocking. Something should really, really be done about the images that portray a whole continent because it's a wrong representation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your for, for both your contribution. I didn't catch your name. Um, oh, Ini, Ini Usanga. Okay, Ili Usanga. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Ili. Okay, now if there is no like, um let's pray a bit to, if there's no if somebody wants to speak urgently then we can open it up otherwise i can i can move to the next step and then afterwards we can open it up sally you were going to say something I, i'm just going to suggest that we maybe share the images that okay. kelvin and christina have worked with with young people yeah okay, okay. so uh, can we leo can you do the magic please So Kelvin, we welcome your feedback for this section. Hello, everyone. Um, so these images that um, you are, like is in front of you right now, are images that are from a, um, participants, like young people from Africa, leaders, young leaders from Africa. We have um, some of them um, on the panel, um, on the screen with us, Clement, um, with us now, um, all the way from Ghana. We have Danny Nevis, um, whose image is being used. And um, from we did have like a, um, a, a workshop on on how the global, people from the global north view um, people from the global south, and they chose these images um, on and they all gave their own um, meaning behind it. For example, if we have, um, I think Danny Nevers is here, right, um, and he will give more even input on his image. But from, from his image in, in our chat that we had, um, he mentioned about the images all about in Africa, there is um, a space when a young child is born, there's a space of um, taking responsibility. You know, that is how Africans we are grown. But in this image is a young person who is taking a responsibility and taking care of, 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 a, of his or her brother. But in the global south is seen complete, in the global north is seen completely different. It could be seen as even child labor. Um, if you see the, the image that is um, number two here, it was um, an, an image also by um, um, Al Hassan, um, Hassan who was uh, uh, also another leader, an incredible leader from, I think, from Sierra Leone that also was on the chat um, on our discussion. I don't know if he's here today. And he really chose this image with the man um, holding a calabash, that's how it's called, and another person in it, and how he's saying that. Um, in the global north, uh, in the global north, people will give charity, saying that oh, we are giving charity to Africa. But initially, actually, the people, if you see a man who is inside holding another bowl, is basically the people from the north that actually is benefiting from the south. You know, so you do have the north people from the north saying, oh, we need charity, and then you give charity, but then you think the money is coming to Africa, but then it's it's actually being also consumed by people from the north. Um, and then if you see um, also Clement is here and um, Clement can also give a bit more deep also onto this um, image where Clement was talking about how in Africa where you will, um, 
um, a child, like in, in the global north, a child can, we have an event where, oh, children goes to their parents' day to see their, how their parents work. But then in, on an African perspective, when a child goes to see maybe his father working on a, on a field, as you can see, and holding a shovel, and a picture is taken, um, the, in the north is seen as maybe um, um, child abuse or child labor. You know, um, so these are the kind of things where this young boy could be basically going to his father's work and and seeing how his father work. But then a picture will be taken and bring to the north and then it will be seen completely different in a form of like a negative way. So these are the kind of like images that was chosen by um, these incredible um, African leaders, young leaders. Uh, and and I, again, some of them are in the in on the Zoom here today. And it would be really nice if, if they, once they get the opportunity to, to really elaborate even on it um, further um, on it. So um, again, thank you um, so much uh, for sharing and, and also for coming in, um, Clement, um, Danny, and um, um, Al Hassan, if you are also here. Thank you, Kevin. And I think now we can open it up. That's, that's really helpful. And thank you for, for going through the process as well to, to further inform us. Sure, I think just, that, Mama, do you, sorry, because we, we have Christina's images as well. Do you want to share them yeah, now as well? Or? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I was going <laughs> to. Okay. No, no, I was just going to thank Danny then before we go. So, okay. Sorry. Christina, that's fine. Uh, Christina, thank you, Danny, for that very much. And thank you for the process as well. Uh, Christina, would you like to share yours now? Uh, yes. Leo, Leo, can you? Yeah. So uh, what has emerged from our youth group uh, discussions? I think it's, uh, it's important first to understand a bit the context and what we did for, for these conversations. So in order to open the discussions with uh, young people there, uh, we did a session and I brought a few pictures. So it's very important to mention that I chose some of the pictures to open this conversation. And uh, in this uh, slide, um, uh, one of them that was the most debated, uh, it's shown there, the one on Honduras land campaign on Trocra. So it's one from the group of pictures that I proposed first for discussion. And the second one, it's brought by young people, uh, by one of the young people in the group uh, on a further session. So I invited them after this uh, uh, conversation that we had uh, for one hour uh, in our first session, I invited them to bring their own images. So that's, I think it's important just to, to know that uh, one of them, uh, it was from the group that was chosen by me. And I think that's uh, also very relevant for, for this discussion because even when we, um, when we choose picture, pictures to discuss upon, that choice in itself, you know, it's it's another conversation. Uh, um, so, Leo, if you can go to the slide that before. So, what has emerged uh, and uh, from these conversations, um, and it has to do with both images that I mentioned. Um, young people are conscious that images are shaping their imagination and thinking, and they were in agreement that the images we receive in North about uh, Global South, uh, they are not representing the full picture. Some have recognized the challenge for a photo to, to represent a complex story and commented that in order to bring more nuance, uh, you need uh, the addition of text and you need more, more context. They seemed particularly interested uh, in trying to understand and to find out more about uh, the context in which the pictures were taken. And also they were interested, what is their purpose of use and distribution? So those were some questions that uh, um, they asked. Uh, and they highlighted the importance, again, of, of knowing more before examining. Uh, particular sensitivity they had, it was towards what they perceived as instantaneous picture versus a staged picture. So in their own words, uh, and in the conversation, they manifested a preference towards the instantaneous photos taken while people are involved in daily actions in their own environment. Now, that was the, like I asked them, okay, what, and what does it mean? How do you represent people in their daily action with dignity and with respect? 
So they had a couple of uh, uh, comments there as well. They seem to be very conscious of that representation uh, uh, that follows, that looks at human, human dignity and, and respecting representation. Um, it was curious that whenever they perceive the picture being staged, in their own words again, they examined in detail the photo to look at like facts or things that might give them the clue that this is not instantaneous, that this was uh, all part of a, a sort of a construct to, to, um, to promote something or to say something more than uh, that uh, initially or the, it's, it's visible. Uh, when discussing charity campaigns uh, for raising funds, they displayed once again preference for the usage of instantaneous photo. Uh, and some were very particular, uh, critical to imagery that begs for their attention. So they mentioned, uh, uh, they mentioned um, also about uh, pictures that uh, might look, uh, might put a, a focus on victimhood in order to uh, attract their attention. And I think um, as the final point, I would say when it comes to my own learning from this process with young people and from these discussions, I think there is a need for, for more discussions on the roots of expressions of power dynamics between global North and global South to have nuanced conversations on how imagine, our imaginations are shaped by photos. Um, although throughout the year we had, you know, th these conversations I, uh, on colonialism, on racism, on inequalities, I think there is scope for deepening more this for them to connect the learning and to have and to further build their visual, well, together to build the, the visual uh, uh, literacy in connection to um, to these uh, notions that we learn together. So there is a lot of scope for, for this uh, type of work, I think. And I would say that uh, it's, uh, it's the beginning of a longer conversation and a longer process. Um, yeah, that's it for now for my part. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Christina. That's very, very really helpful and thank you for going deep into the process as well. So now what I would like to do is to, to get Danny Nevers and some of the other young people who were involved in any of these conversations, if they were there to share their thoughts as well. And then, then from there, we can open it to the audience. So was there any, who want to start? Uh, Danny, do you want us to come to you first? And talk about your uh, I, I, I can start, there's no problem, I can start. Yeah. Before you start, Danny, can I just suggest that because there are lots of people who might want to say something, can we not go beyond two minutes, please? Otherwise, I will have to raise my hand and take the mic from you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Danny Nevers. I'm, a, I'm a, a cinematography cinematographer and also a, 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 a photo journalist, a video journalist. Um, I'm a community leader. I've uh, done a lot of projects concerning a few Mandalite. Uh, first of all, uh, I took that photo when I was in uh, in uh, Wapula, the uh, northern region of our country, Zambia. Uh, the, 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 the main motive and the main inspiration behind that photo when I was taking that photo was uh, in our country, we have a culture and the culture that we have, most of the people have uh, not projected it in a manner that uh, there, is a, there is a lot of uh, cultural mixed, mixed uh, uh, lessons that is coming in, which is a good thing. But at the end of the day, uh, I needed to project what Lily what really is, 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 is our culture and how a child is raised in our country. First of all, when I saw this child, the, the boy was passing and he was 
when you look critically on the photo, you, you see the boy was was even shocked because I just uh, captured the photo randomly in an event where the boy didn't even uh, know. Uh, charity begins at home. That's one thing that we, we, we as Zambians believe in. When we are, we are being lazy, I'm, I'm lazy in a home where they will teach you to be a child that is going to be responsible. Number one, not only to handle house chores, but also to be a brother's keeper. How are you going to be a brother's keeper? Is by telling you that wherever you are and whatsoever things that you are doing, you are your brother's keeper. This is a boy who saw the child crying in a, in a rural, part, rural part of our country. He saw the, the, his brother crying and he has to go and pick the brother and the, the sibling and, and, and put him in his back. To me, it was a great inspiration. And I, I, I said, this is a kind of uh, mentality that has been uh, been imparted in us by our parents. And I was raised like that, where they, they would tell you to say, you need to be responsible of your own siblings. This boy wasn't forced to carry his blood. The boy just made the decision to just carry the blood. And to me, I said, this is what we need to project so that our community and our people at large should realize that whenever we, you are growing, because there will come a time when I'm going to be a parent, how am I going to keep my own children? How am I going to, to, to protect my children? So it was one way of just demonstrating to the, to the, to the young, uh, to my young fellows and my young, my young, my young siblings, and also uh, the, 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 this, the now generation that what, what, what really is depicted in this picture is leadership. How are you leading? You are leading by being responsible of your own siblings and of your own uh, people that surround you. So that's, that, that was the main concept behind this. And I, I, I thought of it to say, I need to educate the people, but this may be envisioned or people may perceive it to be child labor, but I will only say it can be child labor if this child has been forced to do so. But this is a child that has been lazy and is happy doing such a thing because he understands that I will be a, a responsible person and I will be a parent one day to raise a generation and to raise my children at life. Okay, thank you so much, Danny, for that insight and, and for the reasoning behind the photo. That's really, really inspirational. Um, shall we hear from another person? Um, who's next? Clement, I think you're gonna speak there, are you? Clement? Clement, can you hear us? Is your, if your audio isn't working, is it? Maybe take out your earpiece. Can you hear him? No. We can come back to him. Unfortunately, Clement, it's not working, the audio piece. We can come back to you though, okay? We'll, we'll come back to you because we want to hear from you, okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's really good to hear people's reflection so far. Um, so is there anybody else who wants to share their reflection or their thoughts as we have this conversation or go through these images? And also if there are other members of the audience who would want to share something or share their thought, now I think it's also open to everybody. Is there any hand that's up? I cannot see any hand. Clement, do you want to try again? How's your how's your audio? No, unfortunately, Clement, we can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Okay. He's trying to speak. Oh, Samuel, Samuel has his hand up, um, Mamadou. Okay, Samuel, go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, Can you please introduce yourself first so that so people just know who's speaking? All right. Okay, my name is Samuel Ayukwe. Um, 
a member of Liberal Party of Ghana, the Vice President of Young Liberals of Ghana. I am the Deputy of Clement in Ghana. I am the owner of SAFE Foundation, and I contested for the 2020 general election as a parliamentary candidate on the ticket of Liberal Party of Ghana. Well, um, when we started this um, Kelvin Acts of Pictures, and in fact, I love the pictures I'm seeing right now. In Africa, we have um, something that it's really bothering the growth of Africa, that is um, child labor. If I own a farm and I'm a farmer, I don't have right to take my child to the farm because it believes to be a child labor. So my, my child finishes university and want to have opportunity in government sector. The government sector is also choke, so they are not employing. Later, we come back and complain of food, um, food security issues, which means we don't allow the youth to be innovative. Sometimes we need to differentiate between child labor and teaching how somebody will have a profession. I am an entrepreneur and I believe in entrepreneurship. So during my 2020 elections, I decided not to share money like we all know in Africa when it gets to elections, um, politicians have to buy votes. So we decided to go into entrepreneurship and were able to train almost 2,700 people in apprenticeship. I went to my constituency last time and there was this lady I trained who asked me to take something. He, um, she, she learned how to um, pastries, how to um, make pastries. And I got to the constituency and she was giving me some of the pastries in return. So what I learned from this is, is we are all giving trade or we are all giving some entrepreneurship to the people in our constituency or in our region, we'll be able to cut the unemployment rate in our country, at the same time, we'll be able to cut the fact that politicians are always taking advantage over the people because of the poor situation we have in our country. So these images always fly on our social media, flies on our website because people normally like to create this um, social media handles with poor pictures just to generate funds from people who are so much of um, in need to help the poor. But that is not the situation on the ground. They only take the help, but they don't push the help for the people to also create opportunity for them. So I am thinking we have to change the narrative of the way we do our NGOs and how we support. We can change it from giving um, people food than um, to creating opportunity for them to find their own fish. I believe in giving people fish. I'm not giving people fish, but instead, show them how to fish because we can't feed them all the time. We need to create opportunity for them to also feed themselves in times of difficulties when we are not around. So I believe this is a very good cause. We need to get more pictures so we can have more discussions about these topics. I think that is the uh, only sickness I'm seeing in Africa. We portray what we are not. And once we get the support, we don't come back to do what we are expected to be doing for the people. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You stop me from interrupting you, Samuel. So thank you very much for those insightful points. Um, that's really, really helpful. Um, can we hear from, um, and it's also good to hear people from the global north as well, and to, 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 to hear your thoughts and, and, to, and, to, and to see your reasoning. So it would be really good, but also some of the organizations that are here in the group, as well as the young people, we would really welcome your thoughts. So please come out, share, let's hear what you're thinking. Who's going next? I guess we try to create this place as a very non-judgmental kind of like safe space where we can explore our thinking and, and what informs what we do. And, so, and Mamadou, actually April from Scouting Ireland, just, just put her hands up there. Thank you. Hi, April, please share. Please introduce yourselves first. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Mamadou, for, for being here today. It's great to see you again. Um, uh, my name is April and I'm working in Scouting Ireland. I'm a learning and development support officer. Um, and I guess I'm coming from a place when I see these images, um, 
if you'd have asked me a year ago about the first image that you, that we was showed that we answered on Menti, what my initial reaction was, it would be um, poverty, um, discomfort, um, kind of like that that white savior kind of narrative speaking, the uh, troker and concern, the um, sending aid to Africa um, as a continent to help them out of poverty. But through work within, when I was working with the YMCA and through Scouting Ireland and through doing the Global Youth Work course with NYCI, I've, um, I've been able to kind of delve into some unconscious biases and really understand where those thoughts were coming from. And so my initial reaction when I saw that photo that um, this afternoon was siblings. I just saw a pair of siblings um, in, in and around their home, perhaps maybe playing. Um, and it's, it's just really interesting to see that line of where I was before I started working in global youth work and before I started um, on this field of education and to where I am now and how those biases have broken down. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to share that. I thought it was really interesting coming from a perspective of someone who grew up in um, Ireland where I'd go to church every Sunday and there'd be those troker boxes around Easter and we'd be talking about giving help to these poor starved children around the world, particularly in the global south or as we knew it back then, the undeveloped world. Um, yeah, and it was really interesting to hear some of everyone else's thoughts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, April. Good to see you again. Thank you. Um, interesting conversation. Um, Chris, you want to go for it? Yes, hello everyone. Um, Chris here um, in Belfast with Friends of Africa. Um, it's just something that was picked up by um, our colleagues down in Cork, um, the two contributions earlier that even, so I was involved, I've been involved in the, the, the DOCUS code for since the beginning and with one of the working groups and then kind of worked with it over the last say 17, 18 years um, at different ways. But even, even this course that, that um, April picked up on the, the National New Council of Ireland one, the, the study we do and the papers we did reflected on how the images that we're looking at and discussing today, how they can have a negative impact on and um, let's call them um, Irish Catholic school children who are looking at a troker campaign. I'm not slamming troker on this, but it's always how we're pretending or we're, how they're perceiving it and then how they can have a negative um, impression then of the continent of Africa or the people of Africa. But what we heard there from Cork was that no one, it's still seen through the eyes of the white gaze that it's like these images, yes, they're used to raise money and you can have that conversation, um, but it's also, oh yes, but they're also giving a negative impact on these white people's minds about the continent of Africa and the diversity there. But no one's picking up on the images and how they're being portrayed for the black and brown people in the room. So it's still the discussion and even the code was created about the negative impact that this can still have on the white consumer of the image who it's being portrayed to. So it's really good to hear that contribution from Cora because that's, that's the first time I've ever actually heard it from that angle. It's normally, how are, what's the damage that these images are doing to the white children in the room about their perception of Africa, which is given as a negative. So it's really good to hear that contribution from Cork. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you for the insightful mm -hmm. contribution. Thank you. Um, any other person? Can we check if Clement is back on? Clement, how are you doing? Yeah, 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 we can try. Clement, are you back? Are you here? Samuel, is Clement around? <laughs> We can't hear you, Clement. I'm really sorry. Maybe should we put it in the chat. Put something in the chat. That's not quite as the same. Yeah, I know yeah. it's around, but I think he's having a little problem with his internet connection okay. because of where he's, he's having another program somewhere. So I think the connection is bad. I'm sure he will join us very soon. Okay. Thank well, Clement, you. We won't give up. Thank you so much. We won't give up on you, Clement. Um, we'll come back. But Sinead, our mortgage from Concern has raised her hand as well. So thanks, Sinead. Yeah. I saw that, yeah, please go for it. Sarah. Hi, hi, how are you? My name is Sinead and I work with Concern uh, Worldwide and I work on a climate change campaign. And I just want to say um, that I think this is, you know, a really, really good conversation. I'm so glad that we're having it. Um, and I think, you know, I agree with April and what everybody else is saying that I think it's time to change 
you know, people's opinions about when they see the photographs, what they see. Uh, I know it's conversations that we're having in concern. And, you know, I, I, for myself personally, I would have, you know, gone up in, in an Ireland where it was the, the, the concern fastened the choker boxes. And, you know, it's so I, I, I'm so glad that we are starting to have these conversations. Um, and I think it is a really good opportunity to, you know, to look at the images that, uh, as organizations we are portraying and to hear what uh, people in the global south are you know are, are saying and what they want us to portray i was extremely lucky um three four weeks ago i just came back from a trip to malawi that we went to talk to young people um in um malawi about climate change and how it affected them and you know i just have a completely different view now of um that country I have a different opinion of the young people and I think you know even when I am when I was looking for the images to show in workshops that I'm going to be doing next in in in, in the next few weeks very conscious of again having seen the place and the differences when actually portraying these images and the, the messages that our people are picking up. So I'm just, I just that's all I wanted to say that I'm really glad that we're having this conversation. Um, but I think, you know, from my own experience, what the young people said to me was, let's show the the, the positives. Let's show the work that, you, you know, and what was just being said there about let's show that fish that that has has been given and has changed people's lives in uh, the global south so thank you uh, for letting me have that little comment thank you so much Senate. thank you very much also for the interesting comments um leo you're going to say something yeah i hope people don't mind but i think it's the first time i've been in the background doing things and i feel <laughs> compelled to, to say something and but i suppose as a practitioner of developing education and in the past kind of using images in a way to to invoke kind of um, values or, or conversations or lenses and um, i think what what has happened here today of we were shown an image and then straight away we get to hear from danny I, I think it's just incredible like it's, I, I, I suppose the word will be beautiful that we're hearing right from Danny sitting in your car where we've had plenty of Zoom meetings with youth workers around Ireland when we were, they were sitting in their car and that kind of sense of solidarity and um, to really hear what exactly the intention um, and what Danny's lens was in, in taking this image. And, and I, I suppose it's led me to this point of what, there's no excuse anymore to continue using these images in the global north. There's, there's literally not one excuse and um, we have Zoom, we have, we are more connected more than ever in terms of technology. So why aren't we communicating more? Why aren't we communicating with the global side, with communities um, like, like what Danny, um, like where Clement is, the work that Kelvin is doing and say, here, I want to tell a story in the global north. Help me tell that story. Be a part of this process. And um, so I think I'm just brought to that point of yeah jesus this is beautiful I, i've never been involved in something like this um, and and yeah thank you very much danny for for sharing uh, your intention um, with that photo before we go to the next person can i just ask a very provocative question if these organizations do not sell these images of poverty would they be able to raise enough money to do the work that they want to do i'm just asking because a lot of people are genuinely trying to make a change and they believe that within their agency, the best way that they can make a change is to contribute to these organizations, whether it's secondhand clothes or whether it's a regular direct debit or however they can help. Uh, so where exactly is the fault? Because if people are genuinely giving money or supporting in ways that they can change, but some of the organizations have to pull at these people's heartstrings in order to be able to get them to donate more money. So I don't know where is the what's the problem and how do we reconcile it? April, is that your hand? Yeah. You um. Thank you for that question. I think um that it's important to 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 realize that yes, there's a there's I don't think there's um a frame of badness coming from people when they use these images it is to um raise money and they and and in the work that they're doing that they believe is working but these 
charities have been active for I don't know how many years and it doesn't seem to be like I think if we look at the root of um why these charities need to be in place I think that would be a lot more effective so looking at the root of racism and colonialism and racism being a huge part of capitalism and understanding those issues um I think it's important to not blacklist people who are trying from their beliefs to raise money for those in need but I think it's important to work in solidarity rather than charity I know we hear that phrase a lot but I think in order to do that we need to understand the root of the issues so um issues with trade and tax evasion and kind of getting to the root of those causes <laughs> I'm sorry I'm tripping over my words a little bit but um I think it's important that we understand that we can't just keep giving money um feeding money into issues that aren't going to stop if there's not another action being put in place I'm having difficulty articulating that maybe someone else can <laughs> can make that a bit more clear thank you yeah, thank you I think we get the, the gist of where you're going with it shall we hear from uh, Ado, then we hear from Kelvin, then we hear from Deborah, then I might need to move the conversation and then we can open it up later. So is that okay? So two minutes each, Max. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm good. Just, um, yeah, I just want to say um, thank you. The question, thank you, Mr. Mamadou. I think there's two ways, okay? Um, the using picture, was it effective? Yes, in one way, okay? It was effective to raise a certain amount of money. But I would like to think a little bit further. There's a negative aspect, which we already um, outlined here. The money that was raised, where did the money go? What happened? Why is it, I'm not going to mention name of charities, why all those charities are, are navigating billions of dollars? All right? What have they done concretely? You see a huge organization that has billions. Okay, the images that was used and which give a continent a negative image and people are suffering the consequence. We have billions of people suffering the same consequence. Are they going, ever going to pay for damages? You see, I'd, um, going back to your question to say, yes, there is, uh, it worked. If it didn't work, they will not use it. But again, a funny story that happened in a country called Congo, an organization, I'm not going to mention the name, they went to, uh, they raised about 1.1 billion to solve the problem of violence against women and all that and rape. They, and they had experts that went to study and carry out interview. They used 75% of the, the, the resources already. And then they link with the same corrupt politician, which at the end of the day, we see coming from the continent, I see absolutely no impact. In fact, I even see uh, there is absolutely zero impact. I'm sorry to say that, but that's really what we saw on, on ground. I'm going, I think Ine also has something to say. Uh, maybe I should allow her to- No, no, just one minute. Just one minute. Okay. Um, okay, guys, um, I, I think I will start by asking a question. Yeah, for those of us living probably here in Ireland, um, we all know about Crumlin. It's a Crumlin Children's Hospital here, a charity, a reputable charity that caters for very, very sick children. They do amazing work. However, when raising money, they don't use images of those children. Am I right or wrong? I stand to be corrected. However, they raise money needed. You know, when raising funds, people appeal to the kindness of you know, humanity. However, I think it has come to a point where we need to think of the impact you know, of these degrading images to a whole continent of people. And I, I'm not just saying Africa because Africa isn't the only continent with people and my skin tone, you know, we have people all over the world with same skin tone. Funny thing is, they will all have the same outcome as anyone else because of the degrading images. Money, I, I stand to be corrected, money can be raised without using 
degrading images. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for, the, for, for both of you for the contributions. So if we quickly make to move to Kevin and then uh, there was... Um, uh, Deborah, Deborah had her hand up then. So sorry, here are two quick points from you and then we'll move on to, to, to Ronan, please. Okay. Um, so from my side, I think you are, your question, you are right. Of course, sometimes you need something to present to really show a problem that is really happening. And, and of course, um, some of these organizations does use these images to really get the message out that there is a problem. But for me, the main thing is all about the, the, the knowledge, the education that is happening. Because um, the picture will be there, but at the same time, the people that are consuming these images, maybe from the global north, are seeing a whole different view on the person in front of them. So a young person will see that, and, and say, oh, um, yes, let's give money. But then at the same time, the, the knowledge that they attain is that, okay, people from these places are poor. So is the education that has been consumed after that image that has been, and also my own, my also concern is, um, is, the, is the equality, the word equality here. Because when we are talking about, let's say, um, um, poverty or maybe sickness or disease or this kind of stuff, all of these things is happening in, in all in around the globe. But if if a picture of, of somebody in, in poverty is portrayed from the global north, it's completely different context from somebody from the global south. And when we say the global south, as we have already mentioned, it's not only just Africa. You talk about South, um, you talk about South America, you talk about the Middle East, you know. Um, but when when you are talking about specific topics like these kind of topics, the image is not fair. There is no kind of like equality here. So in that case, one is still deemed as a more as a privilege than the other. And that all of this also goes into, and these images that we put, we put out there also goes, um, has a little bit of thing that we need to think about. Wait, colonization also comes, comes into a play because you, these are kind of young people or people that are consuming these messages and giving the charity are people that from the North who, has a lot of money, or maybe who feel that I, I want to help, but then in their mindset at the same time, the people they're giving it to are people from the global south who are colonized by the people from the global north. So it's all down to the equality and also the education that's being consumed. So I think, and also sometimes to the right image, sometimes an image could be there and they have to tell the right story, how the image came about. But because some people are consuming the image and they don't even know anything about it. Like as Danny presented his, um, his, his picture, he told a, an amazing story behind the picture. But most of the time, when we consume these images, it has no story behind it. And then it, it's, it makes the people still think that, okay, these are people from the end, from, from this, and these are the issues that they are facing. These are, so my own concern is, of course, you do need these images, but there has to be equality on both sides when you're talking about to the topic of poverty or when you're talking about the topic of so, um, things that it does not, Real and to help other people, and also we need to be very. We need to also focus on the educational aspect. What this picture is really selling, what people are going to take from this image, is the learning that they're going to take um, take out of it. And this is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Before you go, quick answer. So this this these people, they're not poor. Pardon? These people, these people you talk about, they're not poor. They're not poor. Yeah. Um. um when you say that these people from the global south that yeah. they're not poor, I'm just trying to confirm they're not poor. No, um, it, it all depends on your the definition of poverty. You know, um, the definition of poverty completely is different. So, of course, maybe somebody coming from living in um, um so somebody could be living in a mansion, but at the same time, still they do not have money. But then, by the way that by the way that the picture that you see them living in a mansion, you might not think that they are poor. But somebody could be living in a maybe in a, in a hut, but they feel they feel rich. So that is why I'm talking about the picture behind um, the message or the story behind it is also really important. So um, and I also it's all about the equality, you know. So the picture that you, is is being put here has to be the same kind of like similarity from the other side because then. It then, if you don't do that, then you're playing like favoritism in some kind of ways or trying to put in uh, some one higher than the other. And that is where I find it a little bit not, on, uh, not fair. 
No, no, thank you, Calvin. I want to expand this, but I know that we, we, we're running out of time. So I'm just going to hear from Deborah. Samuel, I know you want to speak, but after Deborah, if you allow me, we'll bring in Ronan and then we'll have some few more minutes and then we can bring it to the end. Yeah. So please just hold on. Don't go away. Thank you very much. Deborah, few, few, uh, hi, you... hi, hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I suppose for me, I just wanted to ask quickly because I don't think I'm Deborah, 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 it's hard to hear you actually. Okay. Are you? Is it better now? Much better. We, can we? Is there any chance of seeing you? It's okay if it's still possible. I'm actually on the road, so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like to say that there's poverty everywhere in the world. There's poverty in Ireland. There's poverty in, in Nigeria. There's poverty everywhere. Um, and I suppose if we have been putting the same pictures for decades and the world has evolved, I think it's time for us to kind of change the pictures. Um, and I also want to, um, I like the fact that um, there was something Samuel said that um, like you teach people how to fish and not to give them fish. It's important that because there are rich people in Africa and there are rich people in, 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 the, in the South and in the North. Um, is to highlight the education bit around it. If we remember in the Global Youth Work, there was, we, we, there was a, um, a model we did on the power of a single story. And I think it's that single story that is still be told over and over and over again. And not everybody have the opportunity to sit in a room where they can understand that in Africa, there are houses in Africa and um, there are rich people in Africa. Um, not everybody will have the opportunity in their lifetime to sit in a space to, to unlearn that. But they see pictures every time they see, they watch movies, um, the, the story that is being told about the African continent is, is still the same story. I think we, we need to change that. We need to change the fact that the world is evolved. Um, the, we have lawyers in Africa. We have doctors in Africa. We have um, educated people. You know, like those stories also need to be told, not just poverty, poverty, poverty. So and if, you, if we need to support, um, you know, um, Mamadou was talking about how do we keep raising funds to support people? We keep raising funds to support people on education and then tell the stories of the impact of what they've done the year before. So we raised money to build, um, to give water to this community, talk about the community and the impact of it. Not just coming the same, you have been giving water for 20 years. So there's still no water anywhere. Like it, it, it makes, like we need to talk about everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, I just changed the power of that one story that we was that we keep telling. Okay. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, and I think the beautiful thing is like the, the points are starting to come up and we just want to listen to people. So I'm really sorry that I'm gonna have to move it on a little bit and then but hopefully after Ronan there'll be a bit more time. So Ronan, uh, you could be given 10 minutes to do your magic. Do you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I call it magic, Mamadou, but I'll, I'll do my best. First of all, to say it's been fantastic and fascinating for me to sit here and listen to the amazing inputs that have just gone throughout the last uh, uh, hour. Uh, I just want to say, so I, I've been in the sector three years. I joined Douglas three years ago, and I'm still on a very steep learning curve. And all the events like today are always teaching me something new. So thank you. Um, I want to, obviously, I'm here to talk a little bit about the code. Um, and I want to talk about something. I'm going to bring in one other thing also, uh, a project that we're doing. But first of all, on the code, first of all, I want to say that some of our members are here today uh, and I guarantee they've got a lot more knowledge about this stuff than I do. But I can say in my time in the last three years working with our members, the vast, vast majority of them, they want to change the narrative. They believe that they, you know, it, the effects on both the audience, the effects on people in the global south about how they portray portray messages to their communications is is of, of vital importance both to the Irish audience and to those partners that they work with uh, in the, in the, in the countries that they operate in. And I see them always striving. The Mamadou asked the question there: is they didn't use those images? Do you think that they'd still raise the money? I think the the, the research. Uh, and the momentum is pointed towards yes, they would. 
but also there is a fear. Uh, just so you know, uh, from our research, and uh, we've got a, world, a project called Worldview, which it's an audience research uh, project uh, that we've been doing for the last three years. And it's basically looking at how, what Irish audiences think about international development and why they think that and how we change the narrative. So I'd, I'd, I'd advise anyone, if you have some time, go to the DOCUS website and look up the Worldview project. It's really interesting. And we're using data-driven communications experimentation to try and see how we can better engage with the Irish audience. And all these things that, you, that people have talked about over the last while are all coming into this. It's about the idea that, you know, these using emotive in, images, the research now is saying that not only does that not work or is it starting to work less and less, the use of emotive images is actually beginning to turn a lot of Irish audiences away from international development. For the, some of the basic facts for that is that they see that this is an unsolvable problem if they see a problem. So it's, it, there's, there's so many different layers to this uh, as to why we need to change how we communicate uh, international development and humanitarian uh, uh, um, uh, emergencies. Uh, so just to talk about the code, the code was developed originally in 2007. It was one of the first ever, the code of images and messages, it was one of the first ever codes to be done and actually it has been uh, used by other uh, um, you know, in other countries and by other platforms uh, to develop ethical communications codes. It was first developed in 2007 and updated in 2015. Uh, a lot of the work was led by uh, a great person by the name of Dr. Eilish Dillon of Maynooth University, who some of you may be aware of. Uh, and in fact, when I came on board with DOCUS, we commissioned Eilish to do some research again on the code. And it was her research that led us to go to, through the latest round of updating. Just to say to you again, you know, everything within the code is about helping our members to best communicate in the most ethical and correct way possible. It is to help them. Uh, I think a lot of people see the code as kind of like a, it's like a policing thing that we look at them and if you're not doing it right, we stop them on the lists. But that's, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a guide. And in fact, in our latest iteration, that's why we've changed the name to the DOCUS Guide on Ethical Communications. We want to help our members to do the best they can. The original code was based around seven principles, uh, uh, including uh, three overarching values of equality, justice and, uh, justice and solidarity. What we've done with the new code, which has not been finalized and, and complete yet, so you won't see it yet, but just to give you a heads up and a, a, a sneak preview, the new code is based around, first of all, those overarching values, same values, uh, but what we've done is we've tried to condense it down into four commitments. The four commitments are authentic representation, con contributor-led locally and locally-led content, informed consent, and upholding standards and doing no harm. It is everything that has been talked about over the last hour. It is absolutely, the conversations that, we've, that has just been had are conversations that I've been having for the last six months with our members. It's fascinating to hear them again. And it's fantastic to hear young people bring these exact conversations that professionals within the sector are having. So I find it actually, I find it massively reassuring that maybe we're actually, we're on the right track. I think we might be going the right way here. A big part of what we're doing is because we're not, we're not, we're, we're updating the code, we're consolidating, but a big part of what I want to do over the next year is to really engage our members back with the code. I think kind of slightly fell to the side, but we want to, we want to get them back talking about those, those, those uh, issues that we've just spoken about for the last hour and embedding it across all organizations. I had, um, I had one of the comms people from our, a member organization today. I won't say who, but it's a big member. And they're going, we really want to get this embedded across our very, very big staff network. Let's have a conversation about how we're going to do that. And again, that's really reassuring. Our members want to get this stuff in there. Um, Again, there you see across across all the areas that members are working in, you know, it's the idea of locally led, uh, it's it's decolonization of aid. It's about really trying to get uh, embed those things across all, all the areas that they work in. And the code is just, or as we said now, the guide is just one of those things uh, that, that, that they're trying to do. Just a couple of points uh, I want to raise just on the back of what some comments, I think it was Chris, uh, talked about, uh, you know, the idea of the effect that these the, the, these old representations of, of, of the Global South have on, say, a white Irish audience. Really, really, in, this came up very early in our conversations as well. 
is that, you know, we always have to think about, and that's why I think it's in, um, uh, when we talk about upholding standards and doing no harm, it's doing no harm to the audiences that we're reaching out to and those changing demographics of audiences. So it is that different, you know, Ireland now as rightly and greatly has such a different demographic to even, it, it did, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or much longer when I was in school. You know what I mean? And, and again, we need to think about those audiences and the effects that it's having on, the, on them, whether, you know, whether it's people of, you know, African or Asian uh, descent uh, and when, when they're looking at those types of images and the effect that it's having in them as an Irish audience. Uh, or, or, or other uh, areas. And another one that came up was, you know, you've got older, older Irish audiences that we, you, you might say are, are, are more vulnerable sometimes, you know, an older person living on their own. And they get a message, one of those traditional messages, you can save this person's life by giving five euros a month. That, that is not responsible communication because that's giving pressure onto that person to say, you must do this and you can, you know, you have the power, you have the responsibility to do that. That's not ethical communication. So that's another area of, 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 of doing no harm or having responsibility to the people that you're talking to. These are the conversations that we've been having and hopefully we're encapsulating into the updated guide on ethical communications. Um, and again, I think there was, there was um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here because there was so, so many interesting points uh, that were brought up, but um, just, just I want to go back to the, um, uh, to to the to the worldview project that we're doing as well. It's very very intertwined with this area of ethical communications because again, what we're finding is is that different segments of the Irish audience, you know, wherever they're coming from, react to different. They react differently to different messages that are given to them. And again, we have a responsibility that when we're putting out communications, be it fundraising or or, or just information uh, gathering or or, or or sharing. That we have a responsibility to think about how those different audiences decode those different types of messages. Now, just just to say also one other thing. Uh, DOCUS we represent obviously development and humanitarian uh, uh, organizations, and one debate that is ongoing is that you know there might be a difference between the communications uh, in 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 development situations and in humanitarian situations, because there is also a responsibility on agencies even in a humanitarian crisis, to bear witness and to report back uh, what is happening. And they have to re realistically do that. There are debates as to maybe some of that can be emotive at times, but it also, there is a responsibility to say, this is actually happening. It might be a terrible thing, but it is actually happening. And the, the, example, the example I just want to quickly give in that situation is, uh, during uh, uh, in late August, we worked with RT to, to get RT to go out to visit Kenya, uh, the Horn of Africa, because of the worsening uh, food crisis situation out there. Now, you know what they went out and reported on wasn't very nice, and it wasn't very good. And the images that were sent back were not very, very, uh, uh, very pleasant to watch. But the problem was is that people in Ireland were just simply unaware of the level of the crisis that was emerging in the Horn of Africa. So you might say that that is emotive, but they needed to bear witness and to report back on what's going on. And actually, you know, it, it, what happened was an Irish minister went out also. There was a budget announcement where there was an increase in the budget allocation this year for international development. And a lot of that was on the back of awareness building and support building. So we have to, we have to balance out those things uh, also. And that is embedded within, within the new guides as well. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to stop there because I think I've waffled on too much, uh, but I'm obviously happy to have any questions back on this. Okay, thank you, Ronan. Thank you so much for, for, the, for the very, very informative uh, presentation. Um, um, I think if there are urgent questions for Ronan, um, you know, bring them on, but also if there are further reflections. But the most important thing is that it's a matter of life and death. You have to complete that mentee. It's really, really important to share your reflections, but also um, to, to inform for the action that in NYCI can take with other people. So please, whatever you do, um, just just take a minute or two just to complete the uh, the mentee. It's really, really important. Um, is there what is there um, um, is there an audience question for, for Ronan? A reflection on his. OK, 
Okay, that means, Ronan, then you've done a brilliant job and everybody gets everything that you said completely, wholeheartedly. So thank you very much for that presentation as well. And I see that um, Valerie shared something online and other people have shared stuff as well. So please do have a look at the chat. Thank you very much to all the wonderful people who actually contributed to the chat. Um, can I just check that everybody's completed the menti thing so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any further questions, closing remarks? And anybody who's got to speak might just take a minute, please, so that other people can speak. <laughs> so um, any, any, any final reflection before we close this? We've got another five minutes. Do you mind if I just say something? Yeah, please, Marina, go for it. Hi, how are you? Um, absolutely amazing, really interesting stuff. I just want to say something really quick. Um, I have a daughter, she's 15, and she's going volunteering in Kenya with the Cara Women's Rescue Centre. But she was going fundraising, and she was saying to a lot of people, um, would you like to sponsor me? And they're like, oh, what are you doing? Are you going to help the people in Africa? And she goes, no, actually, I'm actually going to promote women's empowerment, training, their health promotion, and gender equality and they had they couldn't get it into their head they couldn't then relate to what help it was that she was given or what was her purpose of going there because I don't think they're kind of aware of the language and the education that's needed so they were expecting her to say yeah we're going to help but when she started saying no just gender and quality and stuff they just weren't aware and um, so it's brilliant that she's now knowing that Africa is not a big, scary place. Do you know, it, we're all one world. We all need to be empowered. And it's just fantastic to see, um, from my experience, true with the NYCI, the globalization, um, how it's actually coming out now in my daughter and she's now passing on to her friends. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's changing, but it's, it's slowly, but it's nice when I can just see it. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm doing all this, but I've not actually realized that she has taken on so much. Um, so the word help, I think, is changing a lot. So um, thanks to everyone. I just want to throw that out there. Okay, thank you very much, Davina. And, and before we bring in Ado, I'm just asking, are there not people who are complicit collaborators within the Global South as well? Whose daily bread depends on perpetuating these narratives as well? I mean, who's going to take responsibility for that? Ado, please go for it. I'm just throwing that out there. Ado. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone, again. Um, this is my probably my last um, question, contribution to this very, very um, interesting um, topic of discussion. Um, I just want to end my probably my own little contribution by saying this. A um, small story, or oh, very, very um, short story here. I moved to Cork probably um, over 21 years ago, yeah? At the time I came to Cork, it wasn't as developed as it is today. I have physically, and I can physically see the development that has happened, not only in terms of infrastructure or service provision, there is development everywhere. You know, maternity, uh, maternal health, and in every other aspect, there one is minute, development. One minute, one minute. <laughs> One minute, okay. And just to round, I would love to appreciate all them, you know, development um, comp um, organizations that, you know, go to Africa to do amazing work. However, it will be very, very nice that we can actually see evidence of development because growing up in Africa 30, 40 years ago or 50 years ago and going back today, I can tell you that it is worse than what I left. So it will be nice that we can actually see with all the money raised here in the global south that we can actually see evidence of development on the continent. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, we will hear from Kevin shortly, but just to let you, there was a word I read some research that says that for every one pound that goes into Africa, 13 pound comes out of there. So it's, it's actually quite interesting to look at what exactly is happening and not the obstacles and the illusion. Kevin, 30 seconds, then Samuel, 30 seconds, please. Um, so for me, I think um, what um, Lavina said was really powerful and interesting to, to hear um, that the young person um, approach on, on the question that she was asked 
Um, I think now it's more about not just the, the word help, it's not something that maybe is, for me, I'm changing from that word to support more instead, instead of help, because help, it really puts you above another person. And so that word, if we can kind of like change that into it. And another thing that I just wanted to say very quickly is the fact that, um, of course, we really appreciate um, all the organizations help that is really trying to present an issue or case that is happening in the global south. But um, all I just want is there should be a collaboration. There should be, for me, it's all about the people from the global south voice has to be heard, has to be part of the message that they are going to, they are going to present. Sometimes they are not heard. And that is something that is really not, um, I think it's not pushing or it's not helping. But if their voices are also included into the message that they are trying to present, it will be much, much collaborative work and be really, really strong. That is all I just wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Samuel. A few seconds. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Um, all I want to say is humanity is a gift. If you don't have the gift of humanity, no matter how rich you are, you cannot be a humanitarian. It's a gift that um, if humanitarian is for the rich, I'm not sure some of us, we can even do something for society. So I believe it should be something that we are well prepared for. And in everything, we need to keep a start. Um, I studied something in Africa. I noticed there is no any NGO that have um, a people representing from all over the world. So I decided to make my own foundation to have people representing. So I got somebody in Kenya. I have one representative in India. I'm doing this because I want it to be globally done where one person wouldn't make decision when it comes to donations. So if we have people representing all over the world, definitely if there is anything we have to push for, it will not be only my image where people would think I'm thinking of my self-interest. So I'm thinking we should come up with this organization. We should do more of meetings. If we are united and we are doing things together, let's assume we want to send a proposal to any foundation or any organization for support. It's not only going to be black faces like Africans alone, they're going to notice we have people representing all over the world. So even the uh, representatives from all over the world will even give us one mark ahead that we can possibly get support from them because this is not only one organization or one person seeking for a selfish interest. So I'm praying and hoping that we do more of this. And I believe once we keep communicating and sharing ideas, we'll come up with great things that will shift us from where we are to another. Like I'm always saying, I don't like giving people fish. We have to teach them how to fish. I got a call from Kenya where they have um, farming. They're having issue with farming. And they called on me. We have to come and help with our organization. I said, we don't have a problem. But how long are we going to give these people food? If we come and donate food for them, the next time the food finishes, we have to go back. So in the same we are preparing to give them food. Let us communicate with their government. If the government can provide us with some lands, if they don't have maize in their country, I have maize in Ghana, I can bring maize and we'll help them to plant some foods. So I mean, within a year point. time, within a year, <laughs> they'll be able to, within a year time, they'll be able to harvest their own food without us taking food back to them again because they have short food again. So let us do more of this put the countries together, help them also to bring up something that they can feed on their own without us always going to give them support. Thank you very much. And I'm really proud and happy to join this meeting. Thank and you. Thank, thank you. And I'm so sorry that I have to try and move because we were supposed to finish about three minutes ago. So I, I feel what you're saying and you know, and it's it's powerful stuff. Um, I don't know, Sally, do you want to say a few words before we... Um. I just I just wanted to give Clement another shout and see if any chance the audio is working, Clement. Do you want to give another go? A closing word. I don't know if you can hear me this time around. Yes, we can hear you. Woohoo. No, I don't know. But well, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I think I don't have to drag you back. I enjoy every bit. And most of the things that I have to said, I think it's an opinion from people, as already said. Then what I have to do is now is just to maybe introduce myself for other people to get to know me. As I am Clement Budi from Ghana. I'm a youth leader. Um, I work with um, a lot of youth leaders around Africa. Uh, I, I was, I'm the Secretary General for African Liberal Youth for Freedom. 
So I work with a lot of people, I mean, young people, I mean, young leaders in Africa. So that's me. And then I must say, I'm grateful for this platform. Um, and it's something that, as my brother Samuel said, we, it's something that we need to constantly create or do so that we can brainstorm and get to know the challenges. And, and today it's a fantastic hearing people from other side of you and how people from the global north also see us from the global south. And it's like, we are kind of have a emancipation ourselves from the heavy thought from other aspects, uh, I mean, from other side. And I must say thank you very much for the opportunity. So one day that the meeting is ending and now I can, my audio is not working. I don't know, but maybe some other time. Thank you for the opportunity. And Clement, this isn't the last time we'll connect. So this is just the beginning. Yeah. And, and on, that, to hear. on that note, I just want to say a massive thank you for NYCI and Sally and the team, um, you know, for Kevin, uh, for Christina, Roland, all the panelists, and, and, and you know, to all the beautiful people who make this happen. So thank you very much. Um, it was an honor to actually um, to chair the conversation. And, and, you know, it was good to see the dialogue and the critical dialogue happening. And I guess it's only through this dialogical route that we can begin to question and provoke consciousness and take new different kinds of actions. So on that note, um, thank you very much on behalf of the organizers and hopefully we will keep this going. Thank you very much, folks, and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.